boy screws loose, they done stripped the bolts on them. Should have never sent them to pick up the work for them. Spray the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on him. Said if he wasn't in the rush, they was all goners. Tank curses on the jets, he was gonna show on John. They were sleeping on the guards and it dawned on them. Alrighty. Greetings, chuddlings. Welcome to another episode of Chuddy's Corner. It is Friday, January 19th. It's about 10.30 here on the East Coast. And the Celtics' undefeated begin start to the season at the Garden is over. The Celtics lose tonight to the Nuggets, 102-100. to uh, Just a pretty pretty exciting game, all things considered. There's a lot, it was an enjoyable game to watch, minus, as a Celtics fan, the last uh, fourth quarter, basically. Um, Tatum, 22 points. Derek White at 24 points. He was the highest score on the night. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into the full breakdown. Before we do that, I'm your host, Dugouts. With me, as always, is Chuddy, King Chuddy. And joining us again, uh, reoccurring guest, NBA analyst, Jeff Kupka. Welcome back to the show, Jeff. How are you doing today? Great. How are you, Gauss? Eh, not too bad, all things considered. Chud, how are you doing tonight? Doing well. Tough loss, but we move. I like that. I like that. We move. Uh, there's a lot of tap dancing on our graves tonight by some real sickos out there. Um, that is sick. Sick. Very sick people. Uh, make sure before we get started, you're following the, uh, the podcast on Twitter, on X. I always call it Twitter. I'm going to keep calling it Twitter. At Chuddy's Corner. Uh, make sure you're following me at Doug underscore outs. Make sure you're following Chuddy at King Chuddy. Uh, Jeff, I don't know your Twitter handle. I don't think you tweet that often, but if you want to give yourself a plug, feel free. <laughs> Dabble J Kupka on Twitter. Uh, I might get a little more active. You know, now I'm getting some exposure with you big shots. But yeah, uh, yeah. check it out on uh, free. Also, uh, Chud, I come in peace tonight, okay? We don't have to rehash the Marcus Smart conversation <laughs> I, that I busted yeah. you in. Listen, I, give you a, up. I give you a lot of credit for coming back on after <laughs> that first showing. So I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. yeah. Uh, so yeah, make sure you're uh, following us all on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to it: Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Podbean, Stitcher, all those other ones that I've never heard of, but I'm told exist. Um, and also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page too. And again, special shout out to our sponsor, Nick Prano Real Estate, NickPrano.com, best realtor in the uh, area, and also NickPrano.com, current home of King Chuddy's weekly power rankings and a couple other blogs he's been putting out. Um, Chuddy's Corner website coming very soon. We're going to keep teasing that. When it drops, it's going to break the internet, shake the internet to its core. Uh, but we'll get right into the game. So the Celtics, again, they lose 102 to 100. Uh, they, their first loss at home of the season. Uh, quiet night for the Jays. Derek White was the high score. Jokic had 34 points. Uh, Jamal Murray had 35 points. Those guys just kind of went off. We're going to get into that a little bit more after the recap. But before we get into all that stuff, Chuddy, why don't you go ahead and give us a breakdown on how the game played out. Yes, yeah, so I thought both teams came out of the gates looking pretty good. It was uh, it was the big man show right away as Porzingis came out absolutely firing. Four for four, hit a couple threes, had a dunk. He scored the first 11 points of the game for the Celtics. Um, and Jokic was getting rolling on the other end, kind of doing the same for them. Each guy finished with 15 points in the first quarter, leading their teams. Uh, both offenses looked really locked in and sync. I liked the way the Celtics were moving the ball. We were getting some good looks. We were hitting some threes out of the gate. Um, liked the way we were playing. I thought it was... Interesting how we came out with Porzingis matched up on Jokic to start. I wasn't really expecting that. The two big guys uh, guarding each other was a little surprising, but I generally otherwise liked what the Celtics were doing, kind of trying to make uh, Jokic into a scorer and basically dare him to keep going, to keep posting up, keep working down low, and he was happy to oblige in the first <laughs> quarter. But I'm, I was honestly okay with that strategy, as I tweeted out before the game, like, it's pick your poison. I think that's the lesser of two evils than uh, letting him sling it around and getting everybody going. So... I'm just fine with that strategy, even though he was going to work, scoring a lot of points. Um, I was cool with that. But uh, Nuggets, they were playing well. We were playing well. Second quarter started. Uh, things picked up a little bit, I thought, when the Celtics found – they found some stuff going double big with Al and Porzingis at that point. And then they really started to lock down Jokic. Uh, turned a close game into a double-digit lead. I felt like we were playing really good ball on both ends for like a five, six-minute stretch. Had it up around uh, 7, 8 to 10 for a while there. And then I actually thought the last two or three minutes of the first half were a really big missed opportunity where the Celtics, I thought, had a lot of good possessions, a lot of offensive rebounds, and just so many th three point attempts that I, I liked the shots, but it just we just couldn't get one to go. 
Um, went into halftime up by six. Honestly, felt like it could have and should have been a little more, but I was feeling pretty good at the time. We were up 61 to 55. It felt like we had it going. And it felt like we had really figured some things out defensively in that second quarter. So I um, was feeling pretty good. Third quarter, I thought we came out just a little bit flat. Um, the Nuggets, thanks, mostly, again, it was Murray and Jokic pretty much all night, but certainly there in that third quarter, the two of them got it going. Um, they kind of slowed us down. That was kind of a key to the game, who would establish the pace. Especially in the second half, the Nuggets totally established the pace on us. They slowed things down, and you could see just they, in that half-court offense, it's like they get a good look every single possession. I mean, that's obviously the benefit of having <laughs> Jokic on your team <laughs> and his two-man game with Murray, but like they're just so purposeful in everything they do on offense, and I thought you really saw it at the start of that third quarter. It's like they just chipped away, knocked our lead down. They actually took the lead pretty quickly. Uh, things were going rough. They were up by one. Joe called a timeout. I thought it was a good timeout to regroup. He quickly went right back to that lineup. He subbed out Drew, brought Al back in, and again, the Celtics picked it right back up, went on an immediate 8-0 run after that, took the lead back, took those guys out for the rest of the third quarter, uh, made some changes there. I think he took uh, Porzingis out, switched some things up, played them all right, but still it was uh, Murray and Jokic just would not go away, and it was not... You, you mentioned how many points they scored, but the efficiency they scored was amazing. I mean, it didn't seem like they missed at all the entire game and it was yeah. a lot of them you know just pretty fadeaways especially murray and stuff Jokic getting whatever he wants uh barrel into the rim and just kind of scoring it will celtics offense just a little bit stagnant there was no easy baskets the threes really stopped falling it felt like we got a little too three-point happy especially in that third quarter when the well went dry it seemed like they had good matchups they could attack especially the jays when they were going to the hoop it was there but we just weren't really doing it enough Mentioned how Porzingis came out firing, really just went away from that. They switched Jokic on him, uh, off of him, and it felt like he was just not down low, posting up nearly enough, getting to that free throw line and uh, even lower than that. We've talked all year about how that's easy offense. It felt like the matchup was there, and we just didn't go to it nearly enough. So I don't know who that's on exactly, but uh felt like it had to be more of that, especially when a lot of the other stuff wasn't going. So again, went into the fourth quarter. I think it was like a one-point game. Felt like we should have been up a little bit more, but kind of dropped the rope and just couldn't couldn't execute and couldn't make shots on offense. Uh, couldn't get anything easy. And then in the fourth quarter, we knew it was going to be a big deal that they would start without Jokic, see how those minutes would go. Uh, thought maybe we could extend the lead out and try to close it out from there. Not the case at all, as uh, Jamal Murray really stepped it up, hit a number of just ridiculous shots. <laughs> Celtics uh, tried a few different things, and uh, Murray was just kind of stifling all of it. I think it was about six and a half minutes left. It was still a pretty even game. That's when we went back to that, what I figured would be the closing lineup, which I had mentioned the starters plus Al in place of Drew, um, and just battled back and forth. It felt like it really turned into kind of a, such a slow down, rock fight type of game, which, I mean, really kind of resembled playoff basketball when things do slow down. Every possession feels so, like, tense and important. Um, and the Celtics are just really struggling to get good looks. They finally went away from the threes, and it was like, that's kind of how we tightened it up down the stretch a little bit mm -hmm. of bully ball you saw tatum doing everything in power to get to the rim uh but man, man a lot of tough misses a lot of tough misses uh jalen going to the rim same thing drew i thought who had a bad game but he actually had two huge baskets down the stretch once they did put him back in they went back to drew for less two and a half minutes not sure i loved it um and then again it was really a back and forth tight one possession game for the last like two or three minutes and but it was really neither team scoring um some good looks all around, but Tatum took it in, had that big dunk. I think they cut it to one at one point, and then uh, Gordon hit one of two free throws. That was the last point scored. The Celtics got the ball back with 15 seconds left. Joe called timeout, set something up. Uh, nothing was there. The Nuggets just completely blocked it. I thought, great job by Joe to call another timeout because you. The, I just did not like where that possession was headed at all. It looked like it was going to end in some absolute disaster shot, so good timeout by Joe. Five seconds left, down by two. Uh, Tatum goes to the left elbow, posts up on KCP. They throw it into him for an ISO. Um, wasn't a clean catch or pass. He had to go up, kind of bobbled it. It looked like he almost slipped and then kind of had to force slash settle for uh, a fadeaway mid-range shot. Obviously a shot we've seen him hit a million times, but not the best look. I saw a solid defense by KCP, and uh, the shot was just way off. And that was the ball game. Nuggets win, 102-100. to 100. Um, Tough, tough, disappointing loss. Yeah, um, I definitely we're definitely going to get into that fourth quarter a little bit more, especially the last like couple minutes there, break down that last shot and that last possession. So uh, I do want to get back to that. But I do think before we get to the fourth quarter, uh, I think it's kind of important to look at the the Stars versus Stars. These are two teams that have, um, you know, obviously we have a pretty stacked lineup everywhere, but our, our top two players are the Jays, Jalen and uh, Tatum, and their top two are Jokic and Jamal Murray. And so this game, 
you know, obviously we were our top two were outplayed by their top two. So Jeff, just watching this game, what did you see um, from Jokic and Murray, and just and what did you see from the Jays that just you know kind of helped make the difference in this one? Yeah, I mean, high level, tough game to lose. The streak's over. Uh, Friday night, big game against the defending champs, and you want your star players to turn out and, and duel the star players on the other team. Jokic and Murray came out uh, with their hair on fire tonight. I mean, tough to say hair on fire for Jokic. He never looks like he's panicked <laughs> or has his hair on fire doing anything. Yeah. Uh, he's the most one of the most deliberate players in the league. Maybe Kyle Anderson's the only other one who comes to mind. <laughs> only one's much more effective. Um, hey, hey Slomo played well against us. He did. He did. He did. He did. Um, but it's I'm not a Fuck hoophead who watches the NBA, every NBA game during the regular season and every year when the Celtics play the Nuggets and you get the chance to watch Jokic do his thing. It's it's just as amazing every single time, the way he can just get mm. his positioning in the post, no matter who's guarding him. Uh, you saw the Celtics go at him, uh, ISO with uh, KP, and then some other guys one-on-one early on in the game. Any eight KP up, uh, and then I think in the second half, keep me honest here, they started throwing more doubles, trying to confuse him a little bit more. I think he had one pass. I think it was in the third of the fourth quarter, fourth quarter where he hit a cutter. I think it was the rookie on the Nuggets. I, I can't remember his name. Peyton uh, without Watson. Even, Peyton Watson without even looking at him, and absurd he just pass. eats you up. He's just an absurd, absurd <laughs> player. He's an all time player, which is crazy to say with how young he is and what he's already accomplished in the league. Um, he's a joy to watch. Um, Murray tonight, I wasn't expecting. I know Murray's a great player. He was just hitting incredible shot after incredible shot. I do want to knock Drew a little bit here, and and maybe we can chat about his performance later on in the game, but it does feel like, you know, that's one of the reasons Drew was brought brought on is when maybe the Jays are having off nights is to at least be able to stifle these tough scoring guards and um, I'm having flashbacks to like the SGA game uh, when they played OKC uh, a few weeks ago and and now Murray tonight. I think it's something to keep an eye on. I'm not necessarily worried about it. That being said, Murray was just like transcendent with how he was <laughs> scoring the basketball. Was There's not much you can do with, with what yeah. he was doing out there. And on the other side of the coin with uh, the Jays, I think uh, Jalen had a rough night. He started off, I think one for eight from three pretty early. I think it was like early on, even by halftime. Um, I didn't think they were getting him the ball the way they normally do and involving him the way they normally do in the offense, which I thought was a little bit interesting. I think there was much more of a focus in the second half on trying to get it to KP on the block, which left Jalen out kind of stranded on the wing or on the uh, weak side, I should say. So I don't know. Rough night for Jalen. Is it cause for concern? No, I think we've had that conversation about one bad Jalen game um, at least once every couple of weeks. Um, He's worth the money at the end of the day. It's not really concerning. Tatum at the end of the game, um, would have liked to see him finally hit a game winner or, or uh, send something to OT because I feel like he's had a ton of opportunities. Wasn't able to do it. Tough night for both of them. But again, at the end of the day, it's just their guys were better than ours and there's not much more to say about it. Yeah. Uh, I think, again, it definitely, I, I kind of agree with you. That it felt like uh, Jalen just the whole night. It just wasn't really like the way that we normally kind of see him play. I felt like, both of them could have and should have been a lot more aggressive, like going to the basket. I mean, the announcers were saying the whole game. And again, Chud, you watch more of the outer market stuff than any of us. But like from what it sounded like was that, you know, that it, it, we would have had a lot more looks towards the hoop. So I know I'm, te- I'm teetering towards like Washburn area with like the threes. <laughs> but it felt like it did like you, you had said earlier with like, especially with those some of those offensive rebounds, like that one possession, it's like. Some of those offensive possess- offense rebounds, it's like you're, the ball is already almost at the hoop, and we're passing it like 24 feet mm-hmm. away of it. And so the Jays, the Jays combined were uh, two for 17 from three. So it's just like some of those times, it's like I kind of wish that, again, I'm okay with the shooting. We only shot, I think, 44 threes, so it's not like it was an insane number of threes tonight. Um, but I do just think that there, there, there should be some time where they kind of realize that, okay, let me, let me, let's get towards the hoop a little bit more. I think that there was matchups there that they could have exploited that weren't getting exploited for whatever reason. But again, it took, it took uh, just an unreal night for Murray and, and a pretty regular like, day in the office for Jokic, but uh, to, to, to beat us and they only beat us by two. So I'm not, I'm not getting too worked up over it, but there was definitely some things that were a little bit concerning just the way they kind of got outplayed. Our two best guys got played. I mean, Jokic and Murray, Combined for 69 points. Nice. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, if you just look at the, the two, the best top two players in each team, you know, that that's, I think, more or less the kind of difference of it. Chud, what did you think of the, the two, uh, the, 
the matchup between the two players. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you the biggest stat you mentioned was probably the two of 17 combined, one of eight for Tatum, one of nine for Brown on threes. And it's just – it's it's oversimplifying it to just look at the number of threes because we say all the time it's the kind of threes when the ball's yeah. zipping around we're making the extra pass and getting open threes like uh, from good shots to great out we could shoot a hundred threes if those are the looks we're getting there's way too much settling way too much threes out of iso and just forcing threes when there were better looks available not off enough passing not off ball movement i thought in the first half honestly it was fine we were 10 of 26 at half from three I was happy with all those shots. Even that one possession at the end of the first half where I think we got four offensive rebounds. Yeah, five, and five threes, missed them all. But I thought, like, they were all good shots. And those are usually the best looks I to get. I feel like after the third one, you got to do something different. But off offensive <laughs> rebounds, it felt like one was going to fall. And I think that would have put us up, like, 13. The crowd would have exploded. So yeah. that was just, like, a brutal, brutal trip. But, again, I thought, like, the process was good. I wasn't too upset about it. I definitely thought the Jays could have been more aggressive getting to the hoop, though. Um, again, just settling for too many threes. And then especially in the second half, where really, I thought our whole offense just felt fell apart in the second half. Um, and I mean, it kind of started with the Jays, but it kind of leads into that three-point shooting. I mean, we only scored 39 points in the entire second half, which is Crazy. awful. I mean, 18 points mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter, just absolutely brutal. And again, it was just like such a struggle to get any kind of good look um and it really the only stuff it seemed like we we're getting was when the jays finally just put their heads down and were like we're getting to the basket that's it um but it's like there there should have been more of that it felt like again after that first quarter porzingis just like wasn't really affecting the game which is weird because it seems like he's always affecting the game like no matter what he's doing it felt like he was almost kind of just like standing around on the outside and was largely a non-factor which should really never be the case um i mean i know they were trying to get him out of the lane and stuff the Jalen thing, um, how he was, like, used differently coming out, not his usual self. I don't know if it was by design or not, but, I mean, I did notice that, obviously, he was locked up on Murray, and that's an exhausting thing. So, I don't know if it was, like, by design to have him focus a little more on the defensive end, um, figure some other guys. Like, obviously, White was very aggressive on offense and kind of made up for some of the scoring load. So, like you said, I'm not really concerned about the way either of the Jays played. They just couldn't buy one and i mean again you take away the threes like they shot the ball fine on twos they're just i'd like to see more two-point attempts fewer three-point attempts again especially the way they were and in terms of murray and Jokic, i mean damn uh Jokic, he's just unbelievable like i said though like i'll live with the kind of letting him keep scoring twos down in the post if you're slowing down the other guys which seemed to be working for a while um and i mean again we held the nuggets to 102 points like for that offense, that's freaking amazing. Like, we didn't lose a game because of our defense, yeah. even with those two guys going off, because we stopped everyone else. Like, no one on their team made any impact. I think they had one other guy in double figures, Michael Porter Jr. had, like, 13, and uh, those were just, like, cheapy points. Like, no, he wasn't really affecting the game. Like, it was basically those two guys, um, and we held him to 102 points. Like, that should be a win 99% of the time in the NBA. So, it was really the offense that let us down tonight, which is – Definitely disappointing doubly because the Nuggets really aren't a great defensive team. Uh, nothing special. And it seemed like they just, we did not know what to do with them at all. And so I think our stars have to be better. Their stars were up to the task. I, I didn't really think we threw um, a lot of doubles at Jokic. Again, I think the strategy is kind of let him get his. I think that one, the play you mentioned, I think was like one of the only times we ran a double at him. Yeah. And he, like you said, it was like he didn't even see the double. He just like felt it and threw like a no look, almost turning around pass at the guy in stride for a dunk. And they were like, oh yeah, that's why you don't double him. And it showed, like I said, pick your poison. And that's what I, he's, I mean, he's the best in the league, one of the best ever at handling a double team. Um, Obviously he's absolutely amazing. And you saw it just right there. So like, I was actually fine with the strategy, even when he was kind of bullying Porzingis. Like I said, I thought it might be even Tatum um, who would get a chance. I thought Al in some moments did a good job containing him until like those last three or four minutes when it seemed like Jokic was like, all right, enough. And then he just went like full on bully mode. And at that, that point, I mean, Al's as truly like as good as they come in the league at stopping those big, big guy. Uh, and uh, he just like couldn't, he couldn't even do anything there. So uh, yeah, their stars roasted the occasion. I mean, Murray, that's his thing. Everyone always, he's a big game player. He's an absolute gamer. Um, and he showed up like it was a playoff game tonight. Like he did in the finals. Like he's, people are always kind of surprised. He's never even made an all-star team. And it's cause he's just kind of eh in the regular season, but he's a different beast in the playoffs. And that was like a playoff like performance by tonight. So again, I think you just kind of tip your caps, both of those guys for playing amazing and our guys can be better, but no reason to panic. I do wonder, I mean, he played well with Jokic off the court tonight, but I he do did. wonder how, how Murray will, would be as a, you know, number one. I, he's right. not a number one. He is a number two, but he, he benefits a lot from playing with that guy. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, do you think there's any any like concerns for like the Jays just play? Like you said, Murray kind of rises to the occasion. Any concerns like for the Jays on a game like this? I feel like looking back, uh, some of the other kind of games when when it, when it's sort of these big games, it, it sort of feels like sometimes they might kind of get in their heads a little bit. Um, Jeff, do you have any concerns? Then Chuddy, if you have any too. Can... I definitely, I definitely still worry about the team with late game execution. I don't know if that's a J specific thing. Yeah, but, I definitely want to, uh, we're going to get into the fourth quarter, but yeah, yeah. I, mean, I just think like for overall, that. it just seemed like a pretty. Like, like like you said, what did you say we had for points in the second half? Like 40, 39 points. 39 points. Didn't even points. reach 40. Yeah. That's insane. So it's like I did yeah. – the offense was just totally discombobulated, <laughs> but I think it kind of starts yeah. with with like sort of the Jays and, and stuff like that. I mean, it's Derek awful. White had that big third quarter. Without that, I mean, yeah. who knows? We're, we're pretty much fucked in that case. Like it, it's great that we held them to 102, but the fact that we got held to 100, that's like – it's just kind of like I think it, it's a big thing. Do you have any concerns, Ben, uh, the Jays, kind of some of these some of these big games or anything like that? I really don't. Um, like I said, it really just kind of boiled down to they both just happened to have bad shooting nights. Um, and I think, again, I think they'll go back, probably look at the tape. If we play this team in the finals, I mean, that's obviously the only time it would really matter. So I think we'll probably, I think there's a lot of ways that we can attack them better and more efficiently. Um, again, I thought it was just kind of like a mystery how Porzingis almost like disappeared from the game plan. Um, after... He had 19 points in the first half and he finished did, with 21. Did, did, he had the first did, 11 points. Do yeah. you find with him, do you wish sometimes wish like me that he would just pull the trigger when he catches it? I feel like I see a lot of up fakes with him and then he just starts going into nothing. Um, and and, and I don't hard. know if it's by design, but... I think it's hard to say that because he's been, I think, one of the best players in the entire league at uh, drawing fouls. And yeah. so often when he does start that jab step in with the ball, like that rip through, he has been pretty lights out. And he did even in the first half when he had it going. He had so I think he had again eleven points. Then they switched Jokic off of him, and then uh, they had smaller guys on him. We were going in, and he wasn't scoring as much, but he drew three fouls, and that it was just like yep, he stopped, he and he wasn't he wasn't even posting up after that. And again, I just. Don't really understand that because the matchup was there. So, like I said, I don't know if that's by uh, coaching or, again, like I said, I know they want to get him out there to free up the lane, but we weren't driving anyway. So, it's like, I, I don't know. Like, Porzingis, is, when our offense turns to shit like that, like, that's what Porzingis was supposed for. to be for. He's brought right, in yeah. to, like, save us from that. And tonight it was like he was just invisible. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So, but but anyway, no concerns. To answer your questions about the Jays. I think just tough night. They've <laughs> proven more than enough times in big games who they are. So uh, you know, an off night in a regular season game, albeit a big one, is certainly not cause for concern. Yeah. Um. All right. So I think it's probably a good time. Let's kind of dive into the fourth quarter. Um. Uh, again. So started off the. <laughs> excuse me. Started off the fourth quarter. Um. With Jokic on the bench. For me personally. Um, that was kind of where I started to realize like, hold on, something's not right here because he was on the bench and, and that was kind of an opportunity when he was on the bench earlier in the game, we were able to kind of, that's where we sort of built that lead at first in the second quarter. So when he was on the bench to the start of the fourth quarter, he was on the bench almost for the whole first half of the fourth. I think he came in with like six minutes, six and a half minutes left or something like that. He was on the bench mm-hmm. for a while and, uh, it didn't go well for us. And that's kind of when I started to feel like, okay, shit, this might not be going the way that we wanted to go. So um we can kind of start with there um obviously jeff you mentioned jamal murray um was kind of was kind of lights out in that little span there made it made up for kind of not having Jokic in. um but i'll let you kind of i'll let you start this one chuddy what do you see what do you think about like the whole fourth quarter and you know we'll work our way towards like that final possession um i definitely have some thoughts on that those final few possessions but um mm-hmm. just start towards the beginning of the fourth quarter what'd you see yeah, so beginning of the fourth quarter, I thought it was fascinating because you mentioned Jokic being out. They did not play a backup center. So they had Aaron Gordon at the five, and we're just playing super small. Celtics had Cornette and Porzingis in. So we were basically playing our giant lineup against their tiny lineup. And I, I, I'm fine with that decision completely, but I just, again, don't didn't love the process. Like, that should have been a time where we're going to Porzingis every single time. And, like, he had a couple of nice plays. He had the nice big-to-big bat pass once with him and Cornette. But I thought we should have been basically scoring on them at will with that crew. Was not the case at all. Um, and settling like for said, threes. Yeah, well, right. Settling for threes. And again, that's just not the lineup to be, to be doing it of all the lineups. Mm-hmm. Um, on defense, again, it was really like, it was just the Murray show. We threw in, mixed in a, a couple of possessions of the 2-1-2. Murray sliced right through it both times. Um, 
got a and one on a dunk from Porzingis. Well, it was kind of like a dunk. He lost it, but the ball still went in for an and one. And then the next time he uh, just went right through for a tough lefty layup. So we went right back to man. Um, and he hit like a ridiculous long two step back fade away on holiday. It's a and shot. Again, yeah. it's just one of those things where it's like, I'm, you know, you, you can't really even complain about the defense. Like he's just making absurd shots. And it was, that was it. Like yeah. he was just kind of doing it. Um, Again, that I mentioned, six and a half minutes left. That's when the Cavalry came back for both sides. And you said it was a long rest for Jokic. I think they rested him like an extra minute because they were like, we're treading yeah, water fine without right. him. Like, yeah, 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 let's get right. Like, I think if we had taken, you know, gotten back to like a five point lead, he probably would have come back to like the eight minute mark. But they were like, oh, we're uh, surviving fine. So they brought him in with a little extra rest. And then it was just like a total rock fight kind of from there, uh, both the, ways. The it was like, the, it was so the, physical. The, um, sorry. No, yeah, Sorry. but it was, it was just, like, back and forth. Neither team really scoring much, but, like, every point was so huge at that point, um, which is crazy. And, again, I just think it's – that's kind of how the Nuggets won the game was by dictating the pace and the type of game it was where they're so, so effective operating in the half court on offense. So, like mm-hmm. I said, that, you know, in a half court game, they're gonna, probably going to beat every team in the league, whereas the Celtics, their advantages are pushing the pace, getting yeah. out and running, getting out in transition – just didn't see it all in that second half or even definitely not at all in the fourth quarter. Um, and we, I mean, we're trying to manufacture stuff, but I thought uh, Tatum had a few, like we had a few coast to coast opportunities, just couldn't get shots to fall. Tough, uh, tough action around the rim. Tough. Couldn't get, couldn't get fouls, stuff like that. So um, like I thought in the fourth quarter, we finally stopped shooting threes and we're trying to get to the rim, but we just struggling to finish. Um, and then down the stretch, it was just, again, really, really having a hard time generating good looks, which I thought I think you got to attack Jamal Murray way more when he's out there. Make him defend. Um, they, every time it seemed like they got a mismatch on him, I thought we got really good looks a lot. Either either Jay on him. I mean that should be a no brainer. And they kind of again got purposeful about it down the stretch. Tatum had that big drive in for the dunk. It seemed like a few times he went in there and was dunking. Um, and I think honestly he kind of he kept falling down. Like how many times did Tatum fall down after shots and like layup attempts? And I think at a certain point it just wears on him and he gets discouraged. And he's like, I'm not getting the call. I'm getting beat up. Like I'm gonna stop, which you can't do. Again, I mean it's a regular season game, so it's like fine. But um, would have loved to see just like stick into that, keep going. Felt like it was there. Um, and then really really weird sequence at the very end of the game where Tatum missed that uh, transition like backwards, almost finger roll that just rolled out. Fouled Aaron Gordon. He misses the second shot. They called a double lane violation, which is a jump ball, which could have happened. I don't get that. Someone had one that violated the lane first. So that should be mattering, but ridiculous call. Well, yeah. Uh, Just crazy to see that. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the rule book is, though, because if you watch the replay, like, Jokic didn't really violate the lane. He just, like, faked him out. I think I saw someone saying you're you're not allowed to, like, fake like that. Okay. So then it should be. I just saw that from a random Twitter account. I don't know. I'm thinking it's gospel because it helps my argument. Yeah, but very weird, weird play. You don't see a lot, um, especially in that <laughs> situation. But again, it kind of it didn't end up mattering. Basically, we got the missed free throw, so had 15 seconds left or so down to uh, Joe called the timeout. So all the people who hate not calling timeouts, he called two timeouts in the last 15 seconds, drew up two <laughs> different plays. Neither of them was very effective. And then again, that last possession, uh, the very last one, the throw into Tatum. I, 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 I hated think- it. Uh, again, I know, but I don't think – I think it was the, – the pass was too high. He bobbled it, and he slipped. Like, I don't think – I don't think that was – I think he was going to – if he caught it cleanly, he would have jab-stepped, maybe tried to take a, a dribble and get a better look or go to the hoop more. Um, and I think he was just kind of falling and had to throw it up, and obviously it looked ugly, but I don't – I mean, what can you do? <laughs> I feel like that's the second time he's slipped Complain. on uh, – Yeah, I mean, it's upsetting, but Cope it's not like – it's not a big deal. I mean, it is what it is. Again, like, he can obviously hit that shot. I wish he did hit it, but yeah, I think he just lost his footing and had to kind of get it up there. So he had more time. I think he could have gotten to the rim if he caught it cleanly um, and landed. And uh, KCP did a good job denying him. He forced it to be a tough pass, and uh, Derek just threw it up to the moon. He went up and kind of got it. But, again, if it was a clean if it was a clean catch, I, I don't think we're looking at the same final shot. So I also just it think, though, that everyone in the world knew it was going to go to Tatum. Like, maybe you write up, maybe you draw up something there that's not, because they clearly were doing everything they could to prevent Tatum from getting a clean. So it's like, you're right. It, but wasn't, I mean, he it got, wasn't a clean. He got it on the elbow, isolated against a smaller guy. Like, um, that's fine. That's what you want. Yeah, I think I just want to see Tatum make one of them at some point. Is really what Big, it comes down to. He's, okay. he's made plenty. I mean, he's what do you mean? He's like one of the most... <laughs> 
clutch players in the NBA. I don't. I, don't, I do feel like it's been. Like that four, shot I think he's had like four or five bids for either game winners or game tires this year. Times this year, and I don't think he's hit any of them. Which I'm not. For, I'm not knocking him for. I'm more just like annoyed yeah. by uh, the yeah. outcome, uh, yeah, not exactly. not the process. That's it. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. No, and I think that's obviously fair at a certain point. You want some to go down, but like again. Getting your star player is one of the best players in the league, and we've talked about how awesome Tatum's mid range has been. Like, I, I'm fine with that play as opposed to him running back to half court, dribbling into a pull up three, which is basically I would have play. literally <laughs> thrown a brick through my TV if that was the play. I was so yeah, like, the whole time I was so nervous that, that was going to be what they drew up. I was, yeah. I was yeah, ready I, for one of those to go in when they were I, when, at the, honestly, in the possession. When I saw him, like, come to that side off the double screen and it was basically him just isoed on that side of the court against KCP and have position at the elbow, I was like, I love this. And again, yeah. I, just thought, I just thought the pass – and again, I don't, I don't know if it was the pass or the catch. Whatever you want to blame, but I just thought that, would, like, ruined the timing and everything of the play there. Like, if he catches that cleanly with five seconds left I, with nobody else on that side of the court, I love our chances. So, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I think yeah. it's crazy. People expect – teams in the last five seconds it's like the other team's playing their best defense and knows what you're trying to do no one's like running up plays where you go back door and it's like all two passes in a wide open lane right, like, it's just like trick streamland like that's what you do you go to your stars you try to get a good shot i they thought gotta, that's like that's a good spot to get him the ball and you know it didn't go in tonight they got to bring back that uh that half court in I, play. I assume he's saving it <laughs> <laughs> they can only just, run like, that once off. every like year maybe yeah, yeah save yeah. that one save that one <laughs> yeah uh, that was the uh the play Jeff, do you have anything always... you wanted to add about either like early in the fourth quarter or just kind of the things there at the end? No, I, I was just looking at the uh, play-by-play -play that I had taken down at the end of the fourth. I think uh, one thing, uh, anybody who knows me, I love to knock Jalen when he misses his free throws, and I think he mm. missed uh, a pretty big one down the stretch. We actually he ended up getting both the off of his free throws. Yeah, and, yeah, he missed both, and then we ended up getting the offensive rebound on the second yep. one. Kick out to Jalen, missed three, and mm -hmm. I think White got, we a got rebound, another one, yeah. and then we missed that one. If one of those fell, I think this game ends differently. Just a lot of opportunities at the end yeah. of the game to put it away and not doing it. And the See, like, pessimist in me just seems to think like the Celtics <laughs> sometimes have that hard, a hard time closing these teams out in crunch time. See, and to me, that, that was a good it's example just, of like a three that I don't like. Like he just missed two free throws and the ball like finds its way back to him. It's like move the ball around more than if, it, it, if, if you move around, it winds yeah. up finding him again. But it, to me, it's just like it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't know, like I just missed the two free throws. Like this more of like, let me just hit this and make it all better. When it's like, I don't really know. I don't know. I just think that there's other right options. Right when they go in, though. I was yeah. I was well, just saying no, when, when, when they go in, it doesn't it, matter. But I'm just saying, I, I just had think it going all one, year. Like I don't know. We talk about rip him. like good good shots and bad shots. I just think that that was one where I would I would have preferred the ball to move around a little bit more in that situation. You just got gifted another possession after the missed free throws, like getting yeah. the best shot possible. And I don't think that was the, it. I, the only, the only other thing I wanted to say was early, like right after Mari was going nuclear and early on in the fourth, I will shout out Derek white, our guy. I think it was 95, 91 with like seven minutes left. He checks back into the game, immediately hits an elbow three to like calm the nerves for everybody, get it to 95, mm -hmm. 94. And then like Judd said, it was a little bit of a rock fight from there on out where we kind of trading buckets, but as always, shout out Derek White for, uh, I feel like, being the most calming presence on the team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. White, uh, he was him. awesome. He was awesome. Um, I think the thing is, it's tough for me because I think the be almost like the best time to shoot threes is off offensive rebounds. Like, you always get great looks. So, again, it's just like none of them would fall tonight. But uh, so many of those were great looks. That one was a catch and shoot um, for Jalen. So, it's like, I get it, but I don't hate it. It just it felt like so many... It was easy to pinpoint the ones down the stretch, but the whole night, it was like there's so many opportunities for what would have been like such a momentous three, and we just didn't get one of them the entire yeah. game. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we're, I know we're focusing on the fourth quarter, but really to me it's the second half. If you look at the first half, we scored 61 points. Our offense was humming. Um, again, it really just went a tiny bit cold for those last two minutes, or we probably would have hit 70. It was like we were doing whatever we wanted. We were getting out and running. And then the second half, we only had two fast break points the entire second half. We were even on the boards. We got dominated on the boards in the second half. And then we just stopped hitting threes. We had 10 at halftime, and we finished with, what, 14? So when was the last time the Celtics go a whole half with only four made threes, only two fast break points? I mean, again, it's easy to see why we only scored 39 points in the half, but that's just, like, yeah, completely unacceptable. And, I mean, that's I think that's where we lost the game is they just completely, like, broke yeah. our rhythm. Eddie House had so mentioned it. 
a little bit before we got on and I was listening to the post game, Eddie House had mentioned how like the points in the paint and the transition points in the second second half were just like non-existent. Yeah. Whereas the first half, it was like a huge part of the offense. So kind of cool. Well, it, it has to be. Whenever the Celtics are playing well, we always talk about pace and pace and pace. And it's mm-hmm. just, again, you saw it in the first half and in the second half, it was like s- slow down, drag them out, back and forth, 12 round, like heavyweight fight is what it felt like. And um, yeah, Again, that's that's the Nuggets' comfort zone. That's where they want to play, and we largely went toe to toe to them. But again, it's like we can generate so many easy looks against that team, and just making them work. We mentioned how hard and how much Jokic and Murray are doing. Well, those guys aren't exactly the best defenders in the world. Making them run up the court, making them defend more, is is going to help slow them down on offense too. Like it's a it's mm-hmm. a thing that can work both ways, and it just was not there in the second half at all. It's also crazy as the Celtics ended the game with one turnover. Two, I one think, turnover. Was two, it one? Was it two? One or two, but two. either way, yeah. Two. No, absurdly low turnover game. And two turnovers, and I don't think the Nuggets maybe had like two points off turnovers. So, like, mm-hmm. just testament yeah. to the way they execute in the half court at the end of the games. You don't see that. Yeah. That, yeah. To, to, to have that few turnovers, and uh, it's it's not that – although the – Nuggets only had nine, too, so it was like it was just a pretty clean game. Again, this is if you're just like a fan of neither team and you just were like tuning in to watch this on like national broadcast, this is like a great game. This is an enjoyable game, I think, to watch. Um, just some really high level basketball. Um, but just a lot of missed shots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, any other, any last shots? Again, that we're all, we all feel like with the Tatum shot at the end, that was just kind of just a poor execution, but the right idea. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah, that's where I land. <laughs> All right, uh, you seem so, to think differently. I mean, I I agree that it's poor execution, or yeah, that it was like the pass was like high and kind of got triple, but I don't know. I just I don't know. I guess I can't really know because it, if if like you said, if he caught it cleanly, and was able to do another shit. Then maybe maybe the play if the play was just for him to catch it and turn around and shoot like he ended up doing, then that's I don't think that's great. I don't think that's like if everyone in the world knew that that was coming. But we'll never know because the pass sucked and he slipped a little bit or whatever. Um, it just sucks. It just sucks because I really want Tatum to have one of those signature moments. I do think he's had he has had plenty of like clutch shots. I think that people, whenever he misses them, they kind of they just like sort of oh he's never had him. He has, but I do feel like Jeff, you had kind of said it where it's kind of like we're getting a little bit. I feel like we're getting a little bit going a little bit longer without one than we had before. Like I feel like he had a lot when he early in his career. He's still young and whatnot. But I feel like there have been – but we talked about this once before, you and me, Chud, and, and, you know, it was like there aren't a whole lot of opportunities. We're usually either winning <laughs> – Yeah. It's like he's having losses. ample opportunity. But um, I do feel like we're due for one. He's due Oh, for and one. one other thing is like, again, all anyone remembers is the shots at the buzzer. How about the insanely clutch game he just had against the fucking Timberwolves like a week yeah. ago where he just absolutely dominated the last two minutes in overtime of the game, like as well as you can play. And so since he didn't hit a shot at the buzzer because he was so nasty leading up to it, like it's not good. You know what I mean? It's like, that's mm. clutch. That's extremely clutch against the best defense in the entire NBA. So I don't know. I mean, he, he just, just, it's easy yeah, to focus not, on the, the one on shot anything. buzzer. I just, I don't know. Mm. I, I just want one bad. bad. I need it. <laughs> I go back to game six last year in Philly when he started, well, like, also 18 yeah. or whatever, and then yeah. was flushed in the fourth quarter, yeah, and then yeah. went for 50 in game yeah. seven. So, like, right. you know he's got it. He'll show up when it counts. It's just exactly. one of those things. Yeah. Um, all yeah. right, cool. So, uh, I think this is a pretty good uh, coaching matchup, too. Uh, obviously, Malone for the Nuggets has proven himself to be a pretty good coach. Did you see um, – Charlie, did you see anything in particular in this matchup that was, like, interesting to you just from, like uh, – I don't know, X's and O's kind of standpoint, so that people might not have uh, seen without your extensive yeah. knowledge. <laughs> no, I mean, I thought there was a, a ton of interesting coaching moves on both sides, which I love to see. Again, you don't, in the regular season, like, you don't really get a lot of adjustments and uh, things happening on the fly. But if, again, it felt like this was a little more than just the regular season game. Obviously, we mentioned leading up to it, I was kind of like a measuring stick probably for each team. Is there each, the favorites in each other's conferences, the Celtics obviously the best record in the league, Nuggets the defending champ, like collision course, maybe. So, you know, you want to bring a little extra. They're both well-rested. And you could tell they the guys played a lot tonight. I mean, we only saw like Hauser and Sam, uh, Hauser and Pritch played like 15 minutes. Each. Luke didn't even play 10. That was it. So, I mean, this was basically mm-hmm. like a playoff rotation for both teams tonight. Um, so, cool to see those in the regular season. Again, I thought it was... A good strategy by Joe. I liked what he was doing with the letting uh, Jokic get his. 
strategy. Um, and I mean, again, if we had held Murray a little more in check, it would have been well. Like I'm, again, holding them to 102 points, you'll take that every single time out. So I liked that. Um, I liked Malone again. Started with Jokic on KP. That was not working. He changed that quickly, and it completely took KP out of the game. So again, I think that was a kind of maybe us. Like, I think there's more we could have done. And again, if this is a series, there will obviously be way more adjustments and things like that. And you would imagine that won't happen again. But for this game, that works super well. Again, the Nuggets, known for their offensive team, uh, the big question for them is always their defense. They just held the Celtics to 39 points at home in the second half is absolutely absurd. So credit to them there. Um, And then from our side, I mean, I thought the best move by Joe was realizing that the the best five for this matchup was Al and Chris Stapps. And um, I think part of that was, again, we mentioned that Drew just didn't have it. And, you know, talk about if you want to be, we talked about the Jays, but if there's anyone who really warrants concern in big games, historically, it's Drew Holiday. And that's, I mean, he was taking a lot of crap on Twitter. I saw the people tweeting out like, oh, it's, you can tell it's a playoff atmosphere because Holiday is disappearing and like looking <laughs> well, awful. That's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that, that is not what you want to see. And, I mean, ever since we got Drew, that was my whole thing is, like, well, you know, let's see if he can do it in the playoffs. So not the most encouraging thing. But, again, that's kind of the beauty of having six starters. And I think – shout out Al Horford. He might not show up in the box score so much, but he was absolutely amazing tonight. I thought Al was arguably the best player on the court. He looked young and spry tonight on both ends. He was busting his ass on defense, uh, covering Jokic and Gordon, whoever else. He was – he only had three offensive rebounds. I felt like he had like 15. Like he was just everywhere flying around. He looked like fountain of youth, Al. Um, he brought so much energy. And again, when that lineup was in there, I don't have the stats in front of me, like the tracking data for that, but it seemed like that lineup was clicking. In the second half, again, Jokic got those two bully ball uh, hoops on Al and Joe decided to run with back to Drew for the last two and a half minutes. At that point, like no one was scoring. So I'm not sure like it made a huge difference ultimately, but um. It just, it harkens back. We talked about it with the Bucks, and it's going to be interesting uh, matchup-wise if there are matchups where we decide to start out in place of Drew. Um, and you'd think, you know, obviously the Bucks might be a matchup to do it. Maybe the Sixers if we're facing Embiid, and I guess maybe the Nuggets too. Because to me, it was clear that our best lineup was White, the Jays, Al, and Porzingis tonight um, on both ends. And that was when we did our best. So That'd be so to mean see. to not start him against the Bucks. <laughs> I mean, I get, I understand well, that makes sense, but it's just like... That'd be so mean. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I mean, either way, all I think no matter what, in any big game, all six of those guys are going to play a lot. But there are certainly certain teams and matchups where Al is, like, one of our most important players uh, mm-hmm. on the team. And I thought he was just excellent tonight. He had so many, also, of his signature, like, catch the ball off the kick. And a lot of, uh, I, I should say, other than the shooting, I thought Tatum did play pretty well. And he continues to just show his growth when he gets double teamed. Um, He made so many good passes and it seemed like so many of those where he waits for the double. It's like he draws the double in, the double would zip to him. He would make the perfect pass to Al and Al had so many of those like touch pass, almost no look like touch passes to the corner, like those extra passes that he loves for threes and they just weren't falling. Um, Or it felt like Al could have had one of those like Jason Kidd, like 10, 10, 10 triple doubles because he was just playing so great. Um, I loved it. And then, you had mentioned, or I forget who mentioned, the zone earlier. I was excited to see the zone because I've been liking what we've seen from it lately. Um, they busted it out at what I thought was a good time. Um, but again, Murray just shredded it back-to-back <laughs> trips. But I thought good job by Joe to to get right out of it, go back to man. Um, I mean, we mentioned at that point Murray was so hot. I don't know if anything would have stopped him. When those two guys are going like that, there's not a lot you can do. But I thought Joe showed really good growth in this game with how he wasn't kind of married to certain things. He was quick to adjust when things weren't working. I thought he called good timeouts to stop runs. And I mean, both those timeouts at the end, obviously we didn't hit that last play. Did, but we, the like timeout... the timeout, did we like the timeout, the second timeout at the end of the game when uh, Denver yeah. had a foul, to, when Denver had a foul to give and that play was going five... nowhere. No, I, I know, but no, that, and Denver I, en- ended up I, not use, using that foul, so well, it's all so moot. Another, but I'm glad you reminded me because I think actually KCP was trying to foul Tatum. He on was, that catch, he, which he is was. why he was like off yeah. balance, and they didn't call it. So then he like backed off. So he's like, oh shit, now he's shooting. So I don't know if Tatum thought he was going to get a call too. Might have been part of it, but I yeah, think that might have been part. Of it. I don't know what would make Tatum think he was going to get a fucking call. The guy can't. They don't call, <laughs> like. It's insane. Well, usually when you have a foul to give, you tell the ref that you're going to foul. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But anyway, I, we don't, you know, that's kind of speculation. It's no wonder but the yes, n- it was... Nuggets had a fucking foul to give because they didn't call shit. 
No, they didn't. Uh, which, I, I, you know, again, a game like that, I'm fine. Let them play. It was super physical, um, and I thought it was, you know, both ways. But, yeah, I felt like we were kind of attacking more and not getting anything else where the Nuggets... I mean, another thing you got to love I mean, there was compared one to some where... of these other guys, he just, like, does not foul bait. He will do, like, up and unders and do, like, anything to avoid contact because his touch around the rim is just so friggin' amazing. It's nuts. Yeah, uh, but... Jeff, um, you got anything on the coaching, Jeff? Coaching front that... No, uh... my only hindsight, my only captain hindsight thing was the one, the thing I just brought up regarding that timeout. I don't know. Like, yeah. part of me worries with Joe, like... I feel, like, I feel like the assistants are calling the timeout sometimes. Like, they need to remind Joe, like, oh, no, we have to call a timeout here. And Joe's kind of just waiting for, like, the ear to get pulled. No, Joe sprinted um, to, like, three-quarter court to get the timeout. He, that was yeah, crazy. that might have been after, like, Charles Lee said, yo, get out there. <laughs> I'm purely speculating, the but yeah. I'm a big Joe guy. Don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a Joe supporter. I like what he's done with the team. I think more importantly than anything, he's kept the locker room tight. Mm-hmm. Despite some of the moves, and I think that's literally more than seventy-five percent of the job as an NBA head coach, and the rest yeah. kind of takes care of itself. Mm-hmm. I do question the X's and O's a little bit sometimes, but I still have I, faith in Joe. I thought they were good tonight. I really, I thought he coached a pretty good game overall. I wasn't, again, I thought it was more just lack of execution and lack of uh, made yeah. shots. And again, for all the Washburns of the world out there, he noticed because in the fourth quarter, we only attempted five threes. He clearly told them, go to the basket, and we were. And even those shots, we just couldn't make them inside. We couldn't make them outside. But, like, it wasn't like we we lived by the three, and then we kind of didn't die by the three again. We actually w- went away from it a little bit. We won for five on threes in the fourth quarter. So compared to the rest of the game, we were averaging, I think, 13 attempts a quarter up until that point. Can't squabble with that. Again, I think if you go back and actually watch that last play, when he called the timeout, Drew was dribbling to his left with two guys on his hip, and the clock was running down to like five seconds. He oh, was no, really going to throw up a prayer. I, I was, was very, for it. very I was happy asking for it too. Don't, I was asking for it too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think <laughs> it's just something to like, you know, there's, there's a, another side of that coin where we could have played on a little bit differently. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's tough to make those second guess uh, judgments. Head coach, you, you live with it. Yeah. No, I think if anything tonight, it was, and I, I don't know if it's, again, it's, it's always kind of tricky to analyze coaching because we know so little. Like, we're really just assuming what is happening based on what we <laughs> yeah. can see. Like, we don't know, like, obviously, what he's saying and doing. So, right. And certain things you don't know who's who's to blame or whatever. But even in a lot of times, and especially when Jokic sat, it was like, you have to be attacking the paint. Get the friggin' ball down low. Go, Porzingis, go post up. There's not one guy on the court who can guard mm-hmm. you. Um, right. That just wasn't happening. So, again, I don't know if that's Porzingis. Just not – it was – he, you know, this again, the concern about Porzingis is these super physical teams, and the Nuggets were extremely physical tonight. And uh, I don't know if he just wanted no part of it, he was just standing out by the three point line or what, but he didn't play that night. He should have been very well rested. And again, it seemed like after a great first quarter, he was uh, largely invisible. Made a well, big play down the stretch and almost had that offensive rebound where he got called for over the back. Um, we kind of just went right through the was ridiculous. I mean, he yeah, drilled him down foul. low. He went over. He, yeah, foul. No, he's definitely <laughs> he foul. jumped he, higher and he's taller. I mean, what the fuck? He went right through his back and knocked him over. <laughs> like he got all body down low and uh, Jokic positioning. That I will. I that's a foul I won't call every time both ways. But um, either way, I like him being aggressive. It, it, <laughs> I like the aggression that I hadn't seen from him though for the whole half. So like, is the right play and like a foul I'll happily live with him get. Like I'll live with over aggressive fouls and that's you know what I mean. Yeah. But um. I just, again, I don't really understand his disappearing act, and that's one thing where I don't know if it's him, if it's coaching, if it's the other guys just not doing a good enough job getting him the ball, but that's one where I think Joe can at least say, like, hey, let's run a few post-ups for KP, let's get him in the action, like, and again, and more targeting Murray. Like, targeting Murray and Jokic, making them defend more. So, like, little schematic things within the game, and again, I, it's like, we're not, we can't sit here and act like we know whose fault that is or what Joe's mm-hmm. telling him to do. Like, I don't think Joe's like, all right, Tatum, like ISO three, well, you got this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking so, hope not. <laughs> yeah. um, so again, but like game management wise and rotations, I, I liked what I saw. I just thought the, uh, a lot of the execution in those situations could have been a lot better. All right. Uh, I just had a couple other things that uh, I wanted to kind of touch on outside of this. I thought, um, what'd you think of the possession uh, like the second to last one or whatever, where Tatum kind of, uh, he got the ball. It might have actually been right off that jump ball, and he just kind of was – I liked that he was going to attack the hoop. Uh, he was kind of like surrounded by guys, though, sort of juggled yeah. jug the ball. I thought that he was fouled like five times on that whole possession. <laughs> yeah. So there's like some people that are like, oh, he just dribbled. He just like 
dribbled out of control and like what? But it's like I thought that he was yeah. getting absolutely mugged. I don't think he was about as in control as you can do when you have a bunch of people attacking you. Um, hmm. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that, like that that play in particular. I don't know, like what else he could have done there. I mean, he maybe could have tried to pass it, but again, he was sort of surrounded, just like being like attacked from every angle. It's kind of hard to know what to do in that situation. So, I mean, again, I thought our best offense in the second half, our, almost our only offense, was when the Jays uh, or you know a couple times White just put their heads down and were like, "I'm going all the way to the basket." Um, mm-hmm. So. Him doing that in that situation, I had no problem with. And it seemed like he was dunking with authority on, like, half of those. Like you said, it seemed like someone got him on the wrist because he lost the ball. went up, So that's why it looked like he went up a little out of control. But he did a good job catching it. He went up, like, it was actually a smooth-looking reverse considering how, like, unsmooth the lead-up was. Um, and, I mean, again, it's just a little bit strong just rimmed out. But, like, I definitely have no problem with him taking it ever in transition. I, I, yeah, I was begging for more transition the entire game. And there was enough time left where it was fast enough. But, well, we were down by one. So I was like, yep. to go that fast. Mm-hmm. There were still 24 seconds or so left. I was fine with that. That wasn't off the jump ball, though. That was the play before. Um, and yeah. It just took it, took it coast to coast. So, I mean, again, obviously don't like the result, but that's that's what I want. I would have been more upset if he pulled it out and then we had another half-court possession, which was not working for us the entire time. So I was like, yeah. Tatum has the ball that's with the full team like, and the sees a chance to get a layup. Anyway. Like, I'll take that 10 times out of 10. Yeah. Uh, that was, I mean, it, I don't know if you guys, Jeff, do you have any other kind of like final, any other kind of final notes before we move over to the around the NBA stuff just on the game? Uh, yeah, a couple. And, uh, I, I know we're trying to curb the, uh, the ref talk on this show. Uh, because Fuck that. It's, I hate it's him. Not good, not good podcasting, but, um, I think the refs called a completely different game in the first half than they did in the second half, which is probably pretty indicative of most NBA games. Um, it was pretty ticky early on, and I think they started to let a lot of stuff go. Uh, that Tatum drive at the end, uh, could have been, I think, called a foul. And maybe it was in the first half, but wasn't. And then, Change the rule. <laughs> Change the rule on the hanging on the rim, okay? I'm done with it. I'm done seeing this happen. They want Tatum to fall and break an arm or a leg. Um, a neck? Enough. Enough with this. What, That's and all. what is even the point of that rule? Like, I, literally, I no what, idea. Who does, who do, what purpose does that serve? I it makes no it. sense. It's someone such an your own team. So someone, the only thing I heard recently, because I generally, genuinely like don't understand. Yeah, like you said, I think if anything, that get the other team can hurry up and get a fast break if someone's hanging on the rim. One thing I heard, and I don't know if this is true, was that they uh, made it a point of emphasis because the last few years from hanging on the rims, there's been so many times where the rim gets dislodged and they have to bring the ladder out to fix it. <laughs> so if that's that, why that's some friggin' broke ass shit. We can figure hell. that out. Yeah, but I think they can get a good. It's the fucking there. NBA. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but um, I mean, this one at least, like, some of them there are honestly just like the dumbest calls ever. This one at least, like, Tatum, he pulled his all the way up, so he like he, he earned it. He, and did, I'm sure he did do a good one. It was but nice. It was pretty. Also, sick. it's it, it was sick. It was worth. <laughs> yeah, he was like about a foot um, above the rib. It's one of those things where he couldn't have let go, but maybe he didn't need to pull up as much no, as he did. At that, you're gonna get if you know you're gonna get the stupid technical anyway. At this point, like, go full shack, like, put your feet on the backboard. <laughs> <laughs> trying to like rip it down like who gives a shit yeah. um but also it pissed me off more too like the technical as soon as he lifted himself up i knew they were gonna call it i don't like it but you knew it was mm-hmm. coming but why wasn't it an and one the guy fucking drilled him on the dunk and they blow the whistle i figured it was an and one and then he's hanging like oh it's technical too that was so technical it wasn't even an and one i was like yeah. how <laughs> it's like two they just swing. don't call fouls on on them like they just don't the refs hate it's team. crazy the amount the amount that it, for a guy, yeah. a player of his caliber, like, I don't know. And, like, people are like, well, you know, he's got, like, maybe when he, it's like, that's so stupid. He has to, like, win a ring before he can get, like, a fucking call. No, that's it's like the dumbest absolutely shit. outrageous. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, how does Embiid and get 70 free throws a game and Trey Young and James Harden and yeah. I could go on and on. Those guys have so many rings. But, um, yeah, and in the fourth quarter, again, I thought Tatum was driving so hard and it seemed I, I i'm gonna have to go back and watch but i would say there was like six times where after his shot attempt he was on the floor so i don't yeah. i'm not saying every one of those is a foul but i find it hard to believe none of them are fouls and yeah. i mean they, i don't even think he got to the free throw line in the fourth quarter like it's just but bad one yeah I don't think it's uh, bad podcasting to shit on the refs. I think that people like that, Jeff. What are you talking about? People I think I thought I heard I thought I heard in a, a previous pod you guys going off. Oh, oh maybe so, I don't know. I go back I, and I, I just, a lot of takes. I, I'm fine with throw, <laughs> no, I, I'm fine with throwing in ref takes, especially well reasoned ones like that. I just don't like to start off like Right, the refs were, were not the reason we lost. No, by no, no. Means. there was a whole lot of standing around that whole fourth quarter. There was a couple times yeah. when the, uh, the Nuggets were getting rebounds, and I was just like 
every one of the Celtics was just watching the ball just like bounce to a self to a Nuggets mm-hmm. player. Like there was just a that, lot of like lollygagging. I was gonna tweet that out. I just, I couldn't figure out how to spell lollygagging. Yeah. But that's not it, right. There's... Just text me next time. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, I, I thought I thought I had made a good effort and I would would have got the auto correct. But when that didn't happen, I started thinking maybe I just made up that word. Maybe that's not even an actual word. I know people say it, but maybe it's not like a licensed word, like mm, an official boy. Webster's dictionary. Yeah, um, but one tough play. It was only one yes. play, but they we did a good job um, forcing a miss after a good defensive possession and just fell asleep boxing out, and Michael Porter Jr. walked in for an easy offensive rebound and uncontested layup put back, which yeah. was just, again, for a game where it felt like baskets were so hard to come by to give up just a gimme two points like that, which, I mean, it was, ended up being, I think, one of the last one of the last baskets of the game. Um, I was fully expecting that was an off balance Jokic three, yeah. and I was fully expecting. That. Oh yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. And it, I think, unfortunately, the Celtics players were too. Yeah, <laughs> can you blame uh, them? That, that just felt like such a backbreaker. Um, and then on that note, though, shout out to Porzingis who did play an awesome defensive possession at the end to get the block he on did. the Jokic three. So, shouts out to him for that uh, big stop. Again, defense was not the problem today. Defense was fine. No, so the offense was no. garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. It, it, does anyone else have anything else? Or are we about ready to move on to around the NBA? Uh, I just want to shout out Pritchard. We la- he had another one of those Gretzky's office plays today in the first half where he had an awesome drive all the way. The defense collapsed, and he just dumped it right to Luke for an easy yeah. deuce. So uh love seeing that. And again, that, that, those were the kind of plays in the first half. We had those kind of things going. And in the second half, there was just no – everything, everything was hard to come by. Yeah. It was tough. Uh, Celtics lose one hundred two to one hundred to the Nuggets. First loss home, first loss at home of the season. Um, unfortunate stuff, but it was. It was like you said, it's a good game overall, enjoyable game to watch, but uh, definitely a bit of a gut punch the way the way we lost it. Um, I'll go ahead now, shift over to around the NBA. Um, Chuddy, we are almost at an hour into the podcast. It's obviously, been a little <laughs> long, so I know you have a good list there, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. Feel free no, to uh, abbreviate some of the of stuff uh, and most of way out of market stuff. <laughs> oh, all right. Cross off, cross this off. Is, cross that's off. not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't going to no, – nothing's no. going to change at all. This it's mostly a... just nuggets on uh, trade stuff. So, for one, we obviously mentioned the massive blockbuster the other day, the Pascal Siakam trade. He is making his debut as we speak uh, for the Indiana Pacers. They're out in Portland. Uh, the Blazers actually win in 64-55 right now. The third quarter just started. Wow, um, trades and a flop. also, not only is Siakam up back, Halliburton back, um, missed only not even two weeks and only five games after what looked like honestly a fairly scary and devastating injury against us. So, um, as someone who likes you know good players in the Pacers, I'm happy. Just like yeah, in the moment I felt like that might be a season ender. So to see him already back is obviously great. Um, yeah, excited to tune into the second half. See how that goes. Um, love that. Also now interesting to see. Both of those teams from that trade, what's next? People saying the Raptors now, like, are they going to turn around and move Bruce Brown? Uh, a lot of contenders would like to get their hands on Bruce Brown if they're going to move him again. If they could probably see what they can get for Gary Trent Jr. Um, I think pretty much anyone on that roster, other than Barnes and the guy, uh, quickly, <laughs> could be had if uh, you want. So it'll be interesting to see if they just go go full sell. Um, and the Pacers, the kind of the opposite. Now everyone's wondering if they still have a lot of assets. Is there another move? Do they try to go get a third star? So I don't know who that guy would be, and maybe that's more of an off-season move. But uh, great job by GM Kevin Pritchard for the Pacers, um, and you know sets up for another fun week. Now that they've done this trade with weeks to spare, they've given themselves t- the opportunity to make another move. It's cool to see uh, a couple more trade rumors came out. There were some people calling the Jazz for a Lowry marketing trade, and that they were. Firmly rebuffed, and the message seems to be that the Jazz are very happy with their team and with Markkanen, and he will not be had, which, I mean, I'm happy to hear, but Trader Danny, you never know. Um, it's a classic Trader Danny. Not doing it. <laughs> classic not doing Danny. it. Yeah. I mean, give yeah. us more. Give us more. Concerning. Um, Your offers all other, suck. A couple other names who are in trade rumors. We've, because John Day Murray, we've heard about over and over again. Now that Siakam and OG have been moved, he's, I don't know who you would say is the, the bit like the best player available um but it, like i don't love any of them but dejounte murray i guess could be that guy um he's in rumors everywhere and it's all like the obvious teams you know the lakers the knicks um i thought it was funny today chris haynes tweeted out that like 
the Bucks have shown interest in DeJounte Murray, which is <laughs> just absolutely hilarious because <laughs> the Bucks have no, they don't have Chris a single Haynes. desirable play. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Dame's mouthpiece. Obviously, he's tweeting that. The Bucks don't have a single pick or a good young player. Like, they literally have no package that they can put. So, if the Hawks are trading DeJounte Murray and apparently has 15 teams interested, it's like, you know. Who is in? If the like, Bucks are registering interest, it's like, what does that even mean? Like everyone's this, registering interest, they have nothing to get. This is just like an aside on like the whole NBA trade rumors things, especially like on Twitter. It's like so funny. Like every from like day to day, it'll mm-hmm. be like, uh, like Dejounte Murray interested. Like and again, it's the same teams always like Clippers, Lakers, uh, right. like Philly, like all that. And then the next day, it'll be like. Hawks have said that he yeah. is not available. Like, you know, they, they are not interested, <laughs> no longer interested in trading. Well, yeah. It's like the next oh. day, it's like, it's so funny. They'll just literally be all yeah. those kind of like aggregator pages. And you that get they the, have le- that. you know, the, you get the leaks back and forth from both sides. And at what point it's like, yeah. someone's going to come out and just be like the Hawks for the 20th time. Like the late, you know, the Lakers just calling them every morning. The Hawks are like, no, like we still don't want D'Angelo Russell and Ruby Hachimura. Like yeah. stop calling us. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Like some of the passages like, I see, it's just like, we, well, yeah, yeah, like I'm sure the Lakers would love that trade. Right. Like that'd be great. Lakers for are them. like, whoa, like we're just registering interest. Like, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, delete our number, yeah. please. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted you to know we are interested. Right. I'm going to leak that we're into. It's like, yeah, obviously you're fucking interested. Your roster sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, right. So the teams the all teams shitty. Are interested. It just lists yeah, every like, shitty team. Interested it's like, well, in yeah. every good player who's available. Doesn't, but they have no way to get them. Like, it's, right. but again, you know, the NBA. I think, and a lot of these people know where their bread is buttered. People absolutely love the trade rumors, all yeah. the gossip, the slop, the movement. Like, that's effective. And I mean, part of that. The playing tournament now has made all these teams like the Warriors are in freaking twelfth place. The Lakers are in tenth place. Like if it wasn't for the playing tournament, are the are they buyers? But I mean, maybe because of their like circumstances with Curry and LeBron. But again, I think it's just made the point where you've got there's really only like five teams, and I guess now that Toronto's mailed it in six that are actively like not trying to make the mm-hmm. play. So it's made for a crazy buyers market. And again, we've got twenty teams. And there's like three te- three guys that are for sale, and they're not even that good. So I think we might see some like hilarious overpays by teams that realistically should probably not even be buying right now. So I can't wait to see uh, which team screws themselves. But another name that's been coming up on the trade market, the last guy I'll talk about is um, an old friend and a guy who I think is probably better than any of these other guys and can be had for less and is on a better contract. And that is, of course, the legend, Terry Rozier, uh, who's quietly crushing it. For yeah. the Charlotte Hornets, um, he's having a great year. They just yeah, aren't, aren't I saw aren't side by um, side comparison him and Dame. He's got like better numbers than Damian Lillard. He's yeah, he's having an awesome year, and he's clutch. Um, in you know, in the few games where the Hornets have been competitive and won, it's been largely him doing his thing down the fourth quarter. Um, and he's another guy who just feels like he's like a big game player. We know he's not afraid of the moment. Um, he could help, I think, a contender like in a really meaningful way. Now, the part I hate about this is that the teams that are registering interest, registering interest. <laughs> are the teams we hate, like, you know, the Lakers, the Heat, Philly, uh, teams like that, which would just, that would just crush me. Like, and, he'd be, and the worst thing be, is he'd be, he'd be a good fit on, like, all those of teams, course. too. He would be great. Um, And, again, I don't I don't think the Hornets have the most competent. Like, I don't trust them to get a good return on these guys. So they're, they're a team that would be like, oh, like, D'Angelo Russell and one protected first-round pick in 2090? <laughs> sure. Like, the hell do we care? So... I'm nervous that uh, we're going to have to have to face off against Terry in a, a matchup we don't like. I, know, I think we're all big Terry guys here, so that would be sad to see. But Terry has been wallowing away in Charlotte for a long time. He does deserve to go to a good team. Um, yeah. I just would Maybe love to money. see it. Yeah, I would just hope, I don't know, what. Um, maybe it can be like, a good West team that isn't the Lakers or something would be <laughs> more enjoyable than kind of any of the teams that are rumored to be in the mix for him. So yeah, I, know, I saw maybe, one of those, maybe like, the Timberwolves fake images another of him in a heat guard, jersey. But, and I was like, Ugh. yeah, no, that's, he's going to be on the heat. He's going to be on the heat. We're going to be hating our lives come June or May. Yeah. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about something like that <laughs> happening myself. So uh, he does have two years left on this after his contract. So maybe the Hornets like decide to just keep him because he's still, I think, a plus asset and something about like there's no urgency. So hopefully they if they don't see a return they like, they hold him um, to later rather than just giving him away to the heat for like stupid Kyle Lowry expiring or some dumb shit. But mm. I don't know. That would be a total bummer. And hopefully it won't happen. Um, 
But that's kind of it, I guess, for trade nuggets, what's going on around the NBA. Uh, the only other thing, funny story today, uh, Knicks reporter, athletic worker, Fred Katz, uh, well-known name in the NBA discourse cycle, posts, poor, poor Freddie, he posted out uh, his article for The Athletic today, and instead of sharing the link to The Athletic, where his article was posted, he shared a link to uh, a Chatterbait website with uh, the name, some porn star's name in the in the slash there. Quick delete, but uh, <laughs> the damage you know, is done. As quick as you are, Twitter, did Twitter users. Did he claim? Did he claim hacked? Did he claim that he was hacked? You, you can't know, claim hacked because he's tweeting like his own article. You know, it, yeah, no, it, well, if right. it's just the link. You can claim <laughs> hacked, but it's like hack no one's gonna yeah. hack in and be like, I'm not gonna plug your article, but I'm gonna also put a porn site as the link. Like that, just I mean, that'd be actually a hilarious hack. But I feel like yeah, that would be if, you're, if you're actually, which I don't think anyone's Twitter's ever actually been hacked, but if you ever are, it's like it's not gonna be like, well, we plug the article, or, you know, at least get some eyes there. But that's that's brutal. That's unfortunate. Did he address it at all? So it's funny. I'm actually looking now, and I literally can't find his Twitter. Oh, <laughs> so I don't know. So he, he might be going with the hack. He just he just deleted his Twitter. Yeah, yeah just I'm just seeing a lot Twitter, of people, You get to say I don't even know. I don't even. A lot of people posted the, the screenshot. Okay, no, he's still up there. So I don't. Um, no, it seems like he just. Uh, yeah, he just deleted and just reposted with the right link, and he's just pretending it never happened. But uh, yeah. Like first- yeah. Just, yeah, just I mean, all, all the comments are just <laughs> hilarious. But I mean, what his most recent tweet? People just yeah, well, I'm, yeah, well, it's his only tweet he has recently is just the same tweet, but with the right link, and all the comments are just <laughs> making fun of him. So poor Fred, uh, not a position any any guy Wait, or Fred social Katz? media user. How's it yeah, spelled? K. K. Fred Katz. Yeah, I'm seeing um, a million so. Fred Katz. I don't think it's the one that I I want to see. Oh, well, that's why. I, yeah. I couldn't I have, find him. That's what I was saying. I thought he almost deleted his account for a second. I, just, I am I seeing a pretty point. funny meme of uh, from Succession, <laughs> the scene of Succession where Roman sends his dad the dick pic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. Awesome. yeah, exactly. So, Dude, just imagine like what you must feel like. Like when I tweet out from the Chinese Corner page and I tweet like a typo, I'm always like, oh, fuck. Like, imagine if it's, that's just like a misspelling. <laughs> yeah. Because I know that Chuddy's just an absolute, he just is big on grammar. So I'm always trying to get the grammar right. I can't imagine just actually tweeting oh out. Oh my God. Chat. Because, like, again, and doesn't I'm the not... link generate like an image? Oh, I don't know. It might. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, I know it does when we post. Link. Yeah. Like, we post like, like something the... pops up. So we must yeah. Like, hmm. That doesn't look like Ochi Ananobi. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, and he's a and the verified account. It like gives you like a minute like it does. Feel yeah, it gives you time post. to edit so you and everything. Have, yeah, like even if you click post, but it gives you like I don't know. Yeah, the time from clicking post to publish. Yeah, you have time. it. Does it's like a thirty How second in that thing. Moment, I know, like, oh shit. I mean, he must <laughs> maybe he just said it, or he's not verified. Actually, it doesn't look like he's verified. Oh, uh, wow! Well, so, I don't know. there you go. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm waiting with bated breath for his next week. I do also think no one of their intended. one of their side of it. And again, <laughs> I'm, I'm like Jesus. <laughs> that's a, that's a good one. Um, I also think it is. It's just one of those things too, where it's like, uh, I mean, I'm not really super familiar with Chatterbait, but it just seems like one of those sites that's like not just you're like aggressively not horny, <laughs> like, like a website they to like be on. Like it's not like your standard. It doesn't seem well, like yeah, a standard right, right. run of the mill adult website. It's, it's like, like, oh, Fred, no, yeah, it's like, adult, dude, <laughs> come on, like, come on, come man. on, man. Like you got <laughs> Yeah, it does just seem like an aggressively. Yeah. Definitely, it's, that's a tough, tough play for old Freddy Cat. <laughs> yeah, hate to see that. Hate to see that. We have been, we've been due for one of those. I feel like it's been a while since we've had something like that. Yeah, no, good, good to uh, lighten the mood. We've had some not so fun stories uh, around the league lately. So this one, this is something <laughs> yeah. that all of us can enjoy. Other than Fred and maybe no, his bosses at the Athletic. <laughs> nothing tops the Ray Allen tweet. No, oh, no, yeah, no. No, the Ray Allen tweet sets an all timer too. <laughs> that was like that was early Twitter though, when nobody uh, was on last, yeah. and you were seeing early crazy Twitter. shit. No one knew what they were doing. No one really cared. Nowadays, for someone like that to make a mistake like that is much more like, oh my god. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe that's something we can uh, we can kind of get one in the chamber for like if there's ever like a blow up game, we can kind of pull up like uh, all time like NBA Twitter. Fuck up to There's been a lot of good ones. There's, yeah, there's definitely got to be some good ones. I say the Ray Allen tweet. If there was a Mount Rushmore, though, that would definitely be one of the first first ones oh, yeah. on there. Um, that, that, just chatter. That's a, that's just tough for old Freddie there. <laughs> um, Hate to see it. So it looks like it. He posted a picture of OG Ananobi. 
I, oh, so okay. when you post a picture, it doesn't show like the the website ah, picture. So that's see, where he screwed I, himself over. Come on, Chad and Pete slash Diana Emily. Oh yeah. man, shout out to Diana Emily. You want to come on the pod to discuss open invite Ooh. to Diana Emily? That would like be that that'd be a good episode. That would drive. That would generate some views. I think um, we'd get some views. Maybe not our get uh, usual some, target get demo. get some people subscribing to the YouTube page with that one. <laughs> not our target demo, perhaps. But, uh, yeah, yeah, people would be tuning in. Broad audience. Um, all right. So, uh, I think it's a great way to end around the NBA. I don't think there's nothing really that can top that that combo. Uh, we have – we're going on the road for the Rockets on Sunday. Uh, so, we're circling right back around. Our old friend, Ime Udoka, uh, this time on the road. What do you uh, – what do you do a little preview? Chad, I'll let you do a little preview, and then, Jeff, you got some thoughts on the game, too. You can share them afterwards. Yeah, I mean, we obviously just saw this team, so not much has changed um, personnel-wise, this and that. One thing to note is the Rockets have been a drastically different team at home and on the road. They've been one of the better home teams in the league and one of the worst road teams in the league. So, uh, you know, something you see a lot with young teams and teams that play so much through their defense. But uh, I think it'll be – a different game for fans who watched the last game and are expecting another cakewalk. They're going to probably play us a lot tougher at home. Um, down in Emays, Houston, could get interesting. We know this Rockets team, they take at the, on the personality of their coach. They are going to try to play super physically, try to beat us with defense. That's been their calling card all year long. And then, of I, course, you could have made a different thing with that. Could have. <laughs> I ain't no Fred Katz, though. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> enough, enough of that kind of talk on the podcast. It's yeah, show, exactly, so. exactly. But, um, yeah, and then, I mean, the guy to watch on that team, as we mentioned last time, Alperin Sangoon, who was absolutely amazing. We saw Jokic tonight. We might see the second best kind of uh, big man in that model uh, next game with the younger version, Alperin Sangoon, who's been absolutely nuts. He put on a pretty nice game for us last time, even in the blowout. So uh, I'm always excited to watch him. I think that'll be a fun game. Hopefully we can get back to our winning ways, but I think it'll be uh, a tougher game than people think. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah. What do you think? I mean... I know Tatum said it in a press conference, but when does the schedule get easier? Uh, <laughs> going to the Rockets, going to the Mavs, uh, going to the Heat, and then hosting the Clippers. Um, yeah. February. Just a, is just a gauntlet <laughs> schedule. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully February will be a little uh, easier. But keep on trucking on. Bounce back after tonight. Tough Al. But, uh, hey, we don't have to talk about it anymore. You know, it's like the undefeated uh, the Patriots. It's that like, is you – know, there is something to, to that, too. Anymore. I was kind of thinking it, that. I know. I've also was starting to think too, like obviously we're we're a long way off from forty one and zero, but you get past this game and you're definitely gonna be pretty solid favorites in every single one. And almost in a way that would have been like awful because you go into the playoffs forty one and zero, drop a playoff game at home, and suddenly it's like oh my god, like no. <laughs> so yeah. uh, it is kind of like a little bit of weight off the shoulders almost in that sense. I think not the worst thing in the world. Obviously, don't ever want to lose, but I'm not like it's it's fine to not be like harping on that streak now every single time it's fine to just be like a really really dominant home team not like historically you know on eggshells going for some record yeah yeah agreed undefeated at home would have been crazy anyway like that was kind yeah, of an unrealistic yeah um we can match the uh, 86 celtics who went 40 and one um and then swept 10 and 0 in the playoffs so let's let's go for that yeah i think that's what we're going for yeah that was good i like that um all right so that about wraps it up for this episode of chuddy's corner uh, again, Celtics lose to the Nuggets, one hundred two to one hundred. Um, I do have one more uh, oh. stat oh. that I think is important to note. Um, the Celtics are thirty-two and eight this season in uh, games which NBA analyst Jeff Kupka does not appear on the post-game <laughs> podcast for, and they are zero and two in games where Jeff Kupka does come on the podcast. So Jeff, I know we love having you, but um, I'm we you might have to stay away during the playoffs uh, for everyone's sake, or maybe we'll wait till after the game to uh to say decide. if you can come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. We'll, you know, we your invite will be determined after the games. Yeah. Maybe my, we'll uh maybe we can pencil you in for like a Wizards game or something. Come, come, so get, say, off, get off the side with yeah. us. And if they still lose, like, then then you're just off. Then you're then just it's, done. Yeah, then, then it's yeah. Then it's a so, sorry. It's been a good because run. Because it was what was it? It was Philly the first time, right? So it was yeah. Philly and, and the the Nuggets. Yeah. So both like some pretty good challenges. So we got to schedule you for an absolute <laughs> dog shit team. And if, um, if the loss happens, then then we know. Yeah, yeah. Just see uh, go through the hoop. I'm. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I'm not uh, close to uh, Chuddy, Chuddy Parlay levels of uh, <laughs> hey, oh, despair. The Chuddy Parlay's but, been hot lately. It's been hot. Tonight? 
We were you had uh, to get, you had to get off the Schneid though at some point. Well, yeah, exactly. Once I stopped right. doing right. like plus right. seven hundred ones, I realized that maybe that's not the <laughs> yeah. best strategy. Uh, right. But no, tonight it was. Um, uh, I think I had Jalen two and a half assists, and he only had one assist. So all right, well, pencil me in. Everything pencil else me in next though. time for the for the Wizards game. Yeah, or, or we're gonna find a real shitty opponent looking. to have. You Friday, February 9th. <laughs> Friday, February 9th, Friday, February 9th, seven thirty. First the Wizards. Friday, pencil February pencil 9th, first pencil the Wizards. Me in. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to the game before that against the Hawks, so I'll be doing maybe some like live uh with that face, Judd. Okay. How does that affect you? What are you gonna low? No, I just am excited for it. I don't know. It doesn't affect anything we're talking about. I'm just excited. I'm trying to think about, you know, which uh, I'm trying to maybe get on the parquet for do the podcast right, from right. the parquet. Um maybe you'll I, meet your guy Drudel. Yeah, that's true. If Drudel's that's lurking, I'm definitely should I just bring a sign that's like Chuddy's corner with like an arrow pointing down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> Good stat. Great stat. Uh, that's it for tonight, folks. Celtics lose. It sucks, but we'll be back. It's all right. Not the end of the world, despite um, what you might hear um, from less uh, optimistic fans. Far uh, from it. We will see everyone back here Sunday night. Jeff. Uh, I was going to say, it's good. as always, it's a treat, but after that stat, I'm not so sure that I can say that. But I do appreciate you coming on. It's, it's, it, it, is, it is good to have you on here. So we'll see everyone Sunday night. Everyone have a good night. Take care, guys. Peace out, Jay. Yeah.